Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Peach and I am an environmental journalist with the Yale Forum on Climate Change in the Media. Today I'm visiting Duke University where I'm going to be interviewing a wonderful guest. His name is Jay Hamilton and he's a professor of political science and economics here at the university. Welcome to the Yale Forum, Jay. Thank you. You wrote a book called All the News That's Fit to Sell and in that book you write that news is a commodity, not a mere image of reality. What did you mean by that? I think if you asked uh, journalism or people who have been to journalism school what a news story is, they would probably tell you it's the five W's, uh, who, what, when, where, and why. In the book what I try to show is that if you look closely at news, it's actually determined by a five set of economic W's. Who cares about a particular piece of information? What are they willing to pay for it or what other, are others willing to pay for their attention? Where else can advertisers reach them? When is this profitable? And why is this profitable? And um, journalists such as yourself don't roll out of bed in the morning and say this is a great day to maximize profits. But the set of stories that survive and the set of outlets that survive are really uh, determined by the answers to those five economic W's. What are the economic challenges news organiza organizations face when they're considering telling a story about climate change? So climate change has uh, at least two strikes against it as a story. One is it's a hard news story. And when you think about the different types of information demands people have, they demand things as consumers that helps them make purchasing decisions, as producers, things that help them do their job, entertainment news, that's just fun to know, and uh, voter or citizen information. And the first three types of information demands work pretty well. So if you don't get the information, you don't get the benefit. So when I was searching for a used Prius last month, I actually spent a morning on Edmunds.com and I got a better price, I think, or I hope, uh, when I bought that car. If I'd spent that same morning learning about climate change, uh, the bill in the Senate would not have changed because I don't have a large statistical impact on debates in Washington. And Anthony Downs has written long ago that that means that many people will remain rationally ignorant about the details of politics. And so what that means is that, not that nobody wants to know about climate change, I think I would say there's uh, the three Ds. Some people feel they have a duty to become informed and they will learn about issues like climate change. Uh, diversion, for some people watching a C-SPAN hearing on climate change is like watching ESPN. They just really love the details of policy. The third one would be drama. Uh, maybe you don't want to know the details of climate change, but if I talk to you about climate change as a horse race, the Republicans are ahead or not, or scandal, then some people will be interested. So number one, climate change is a hard story to talk about because it's a hard news story. Number two, the second strike against climate change is that the nature of the story means that it's international, it is something involved in the future, and then the final thing is it involves a, a heavy investment in sense making, and by that I mean if you just try to follow the story and dip in, uh, it's hard to do. What do you think the role is of the fact that it's a pretty depressing story? That's another th uh, a third strike, but I don't <laughs> want to call it the third strike. Uh, another thing that is difficult about climate change is that social science research by people like John Krosnick at Stanford have shown that there are a set of beliefs that you need to have if you are to come to the conclusion that climate change is an important issue. Those set of beliefs, however, can actually be demobilizing because as you come to appreciate the scope of the problem and where we are today, for some people, um, unless they're given additional information, they just throw up their hands. So that's why uh, people in the climate change community are trying to emphasize solutions. What do you see as some possible solutions to this issue that public affairs journalism, including climate change journalism, it's hard to find a good business model for that. Uh, number one, uh, things like the Yale Forum. This is not a product placement, but if you look <laughs> across the public affairs coverage, nonprofits are more likely now to uh, cover issues. And um, having a debate about privacy is also another way that we could increase revenues for newspapers who are writing about climate change. Behavioral ad targeting on the internet allows somebody to monetize the attention of people who are reading about hard news. Right now, if I go to a hard news story on the News and Observer, I'll either be shown a picture of somebody's white teeth or uh, one secret to a flat stomach. I'm not buying either of those products. <laughs> uh, but I was trying to find a Prius. 
And if they can show me an ad that's more relevant to me, they can charge a higher price for that. That's a debate we'll probably need to have. Would you be willing to let Google and Yahoo use what they know to allow your local news site to get higher ad revenue? Well, thank you so much sure. for coming on. Thank you very much.